Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 10 of this NHL 22 Newfoundland Growlers Draft of Glory franchise mode. If you missed the last episode, go back and check it out because we were somehow able to win the Stanley Cup in our first ever playoffs with this team. We've never made the playoffs before. We simulated the whole thing and somehow we went through Detroit, Buffalo, somehow Columbus. We were down 3 nothing. We came back and won four in a row. The most improbable comeback ever and then we just kicked um winnipeg's butt in the finals but we get our first ever stanley cup to be honest i think it was a little premature which is too bad because we do have some big name contracts expiring here which is going to make it difficult especially guys like carpenter cahoon edwards Delmore, like there's there are big names here that we are gonna have to re-sign. Some of them are not gonna be worth the money they're requesting, which I can just about guarantee at this point. Looking in the system, we have some big name players coming up too. Donovan Christie's gonna be a great addition to this lineup. Sergei Kasevnikov, we are going to sign and put in the AHL. I mean, a guy like Thomas Roden or Rodin was just able to play in the NHL and put up 13 points. So that's not terrible for a fourth round pick but we have some much better forwards coming up the system that I'm really excited to see uh, develop and get, you know, closer to an NHL spot. But with that in mind, you know, we did have a bit of a, I wouldn't say a letdown necessarily, but just a slower start of a career for Timofey Morozov, who is grown up to six feet tall now, but didn't really have the most exciting um, year in Russia. So we will likely be signing him as well. And there are other players like Letary we probably should release at this point. And other younger players or lower rated players like that we just aren't going to sign yet. And looking at our current team situation, you know, as much as I would like to go with a guy like Tiro Piesmanen, who's, you know, he's only put up 22 wins, but he's only played 55 games. But almost 100 wins for Yuri Vorobyov is a much better kind of group of numbers but looking at what he wants you know seven million for one year and he doesn't want an extension might kind of be a hard play to deal with as far as we have Kelly Muller coming up he's going to be a backup goalie we have Tiro Piesmanen who looks really good is developing pretty well to be completely honest he's 23 years old has already played two full seasons we do have a bit of a goaltending issue but that's the team. We're going to get up to the draft here. Um, looking at the draft so far, you know, we're not going to be picking anywhere in the top part of this draft. Um, it's unfortunate because there are some, I, I think there's going to be some good players. I'm still waiting for some scouting reports back here, but I'm sure we'll start to find them here as uh, we continue on. I don't know why I've got him pinned, but yeah, like a guy like Stefan Erickson looks good. There, there's going to be players in this draft, so We'll see what happens here, but let's get to the draft. All right, so for the lottery this year, we're going to see Tampa Bay move up to pick one from five. Arizona, Carolina, Edmonton, and Montreal will also pick in the top five, and we're nowhere on the board because, again, we made the playoffs and won the Stanley Cup. So, guys, looking at the draft coming up here, and this draft is looking strong. Like, there are a lot of guaranteed players here. We've gotten some really good scouting back this year, and... I think we're pretty much set to land most of these players. Like, look at the sheer amount of gems we've got pinned. Like, Gauthier Leduc looks NHL ready as a defenseman. That's huge. Um, McDonough, McCollum, Zimmerman, all gems that are within our picking range, I believe. And it, Asher Burrish, yes, he's 20, but he's medium elite center still. Like, he looks really good. So, we'll see how the development curve goes for these guys, but I think we're pretty much set to pick all of those guys so we're not going to be anywhere near the top of the draft yes that does kind of suck because you know it is a draft glory but we won the cup i can't even complain so <laughs> let's get into this um advance view the retirees and see how this goes so taylor hall is your biggest name retiree with under a point per game throughout his career lots of guys under a point per game but um still a decent you know retiree class as far as goalies go, we see Markstrom, Allen. How good was Markstrom? Yeah, he was ready for retiring. Markstrom, Allen, Ranta, Drieger. And that's pretty much it. Um, did we lose any Newfoundland players? 
Yes, we did. Vinny Letary retires, so that's good. I think he knew his time was up here, but again, it's just good to see him retire as he had a good long career with our AHL team for the most part. So looking ahead here, do we see any Halifax or Newfoundland's coaches retire? No, we do not. Perfect. All right. So um, I'm going to do some draft interviews here just on a couple players, like mainly just go to Leduc. He looks really good. So I just want to see what... Um, if we can get a better assessment of him. But he looks NHL ready, so I assume he's going to be top four. I doubt he's going to be an elite in the second round, but you never know, right? Um, all right. We're just going to ask about his readiness a bit more, and we're going to ask about his character too, because normally I don't do draft interviews, but with the personality, I think that um, we already have his... Uh, NHL readiness and play style so it's good to see I'm hoping it adds a little more to its potential possibly because our scouts just haven't quite covered that but um he he has to be elite doesn't he like I would think or maybe not elite but he has to be medium top four with those ratings so we'll see um we'll see what he turns out to be but he is likely going to be the first pick of our draft uh, coming up here, so let's get to it. As far as the trade block goes, again, um, I don't think we're trading Peaceman in, to be completely honest. I, I really do kind of get the feeling that we're, oh, Pitkin and drop to a medium six. That kind of sucks, but I do really get the feeling that this team could see um, a couple changes in goal coming up, especially. And apart from that, the other spot like we could end up acquiring a pick with Vorobyov. Yes, he's an elite goalie. Yes, he's been really good for us. He was one of our like I think he was our first elite acquisition in this series to be honest. No, that's not true. He was our he was our third. He was drafted in 2022, so he went behind um Connor Yee and Taylor Nicholson, but he was like our first elite goalie that we got. So it is going to be a little rough having to let him go eventually. Um, but we have so many good goalies as well that I'm not exactly worried about it. So yeah, we're going to be picking like end of the first round, but the team's in good shape. We got prospects, especially Russian prospects coming up. And I think we're going to be just fine. Look at Nicholson. Oh my God, up to a 90 overall. Let's go. That's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for Nicholson to really just explode and have a career year, and he did, and it led to a cup. So, all right, here we go. I know we don't really need a lot more defense here, but we're going to take at least one, if not two. Um, but let's sim the first round, see how it goes, and do we miss out? No, Beach was a good player, though, but do we miss out on Gauthier LeDuc? Um, Legace was really nice. Barnett was really good. Oh my goodness, Barnett was really good, yeah. Um, Maurice, or Maurice? Maurice Guitz was really good. Setzinger fell to seven? Who? Oh, LA, what are you doing? You Newmanen falls to... What? What just happened? Cavallo is the best player, makes sense. Trafford goes to the Coyotes, Foy, Yolanov, Darby is not supposed to get picked there. Oh, Setzinger too. Setzinger's a steal at pick seven. Wow, okay. That kind of sucks for uh, LA, but they, they screwed themselves. All right, so with pick number 33, I believe we have to go with Gauthier Leduc. I mean... Yeah, and Ed Phillips looks good too, but I, I would rather take the guaranteed like NHL ready level player. So we're going to do it. And he is a medium four. Okay, that's what I was expecting. And he is 76 rated. Let's go. Not only that, but he's a good skater. He's got back at you and truculence. And yeah, that's a good pick for a 33rd overall. Pretty much second round player. So... Over to pick 66, Eminger's nice. Ooh, Eminger's really nice. Okay. Um, I kind of guessed Larry Nolan was going to be good, but I wasn't sure because he was like a... Is he a two-year ETA? Uh, he's probably three, but still. Apart from that, 
Nolan had good potential. Beach, Sloan, Jacuzzi, Vizaloma, Vandeville. Oh my god, look at this second round. Emmons wasn't so good, but Phillips, okay, Phillips wasn't an elite, thank god. That would have I would have been kicking myself for that. But Anthony was good too. You know, not a bad second round either. Let's see if we could land. Erickson was good. He was 69 rated, but um, the next player I had pinned here was an elite, but I believe, yeah, it's the goalie. Is it the goalie? Yeah, we're going with the goalie at pick 66. He's, he just looks good, and he's huge, and he is elite, obviously. All four bars were there, but he's 57 overall. Okay, at 18 years old. Matteo McCollum for Sarnia looks really good. He looks like a legit goalie for the future, so... On to round number three, Plakanov was okay. Anybody else? Doesn't really look like it to start off, but... Ooh, elite there in Mestre. Yeah, Jesse Mestre and, yeah, Quentin Cork. But Cork was 19. That's why I picked McCollum over Cork was because Cork was just a year older. So, all right, for our third round pick, again, we've got an elite player pinned here somewhere. Yeah, Burrish. So Asher Burrish is going to be our pick. He is 20. Yes, I know, and he's a center, but how good is he really? And Asher Burrish is 56 rated two way forward. Okay, so he might potentially make the NHL at some point, but again, you know, playing for um where is that Saskatoon, I guess? Yeah. Playing for Saskatoon, he's been pretty sturdy. He's gotten better every year, and hopefully we'll see him develop, but I think he's pretty much going to go straight into the AHL after this. So, all right. Apart from Burrish, who was good heading into round four, not a lot. Low top four to a mine and um, elite goalie and Dwyer there. Aiden Dwyer, uh, Carolina gets a real nice pick. I mean, I'm sure Arizona's kicking themselves for not picking him, but um, we're not taking Petrangelo. We're going to take. Carlotti, Timo Carlotti, 5'9", left wing sniper, pretty similar to uh, what's his name that we just picked last year, um, never mind, we didn't pick a winger that small last year, it was two years ago, Cedric Bugstad we picked, who was very similar in style, um, but how good overall is he? 50 overall, okay, so he's a little bit better, so maybe we'll see him develop, he played 10 games in Liga, and we're going to let him continue to develop over there. So, over to pick number 165 now, and ooh, Atkinson was nice, all right, not a bad pick there at all, um, Olsen was also really nice, my goodness, Blomstrand goes as a decent medium six, um, another elite in Ernest Gentad, this was a strong draft, to be completely honest, there was a lot of really, really decent players in here, so... For our fifth round pick, we're going with an elite. Um, he's way off the board. He's low elite, but Harry Zimmerman. Again, undersized center, but put up two points, 22 penalty minutes in uh, the National League last year for Geneve Servette. Yeah, Geneve Servette. Um, so he's a playmaker, guaranteed gem, and he's low elite. How good is he, though? Oh, he's 61 rated. Ooh, that's a nice player there. Okay, Harry Zimmerman might be the pick of the draft for us here. Because you look at our other picks, like, 61 is up there. 50 rated for Carlotti. Like, what was our other guy here? 56 for Burrish. So 61 is actually our second highest rated player after, of course, Gauthier LeDuc. But to be honest, I think Zimmerman has better potential. So over to pick 189 now. And we're going to see Carpenter, Lesser Dwells. You know, they're all medium nines. Oh, Pratt was good. Okay. Oh, and he's huge. 6'5", 230. Jimmy Pratt's a nice goalie there. Or a nice defender there. Uh, Froats was decent. And apart from that, doesn't look like too... Yeah, not too much else. A lot of the teams have been missing on some really good prospects here. So, for our 198th overall pick, I've got two low elites that are off the board here where are you guys there they, okay there's one so robinson mcdonough we're gonna take we could probably take him with our seventh rounder but this guy here as well travis thorne our u.s scouts are getting the job done so 
We're going to take those two guys. Uh, we'll start off with McDonough. Robinson McDonough looks really good, and hopefully he'll develop. And he turns out to be 51 overall. Okay, not terrible. Um, actually, a really good sixth round pick. And then on to the last pick of the draft. So we get to essentially see everybody else that's been drafted here. Uh, Gersberger, or Geisberger, however you say his name, was decent. Kapitanov's a good seventh. Same with Young, um, or Jung, however you say his name. And that's, that's it for the seventh round. So what's his name here? Travis Thorne is going to be a really solid 7th round defenseman. Defensive defenseman, and he is 49 rated. Okay, so Thorne and Gauthier Leduc, we land two defensive defensemen, so that'll help out with our PK hopefully in the future. Um, apart from that, McDonough's a good sniper. Zimmerman's a good playmaker. Carlotti could make the NHL as a sniper too. Burrish and McCollum are both elite, and that is a killer draft again. That This team just keeps adding ridiculous prospects that will, you know, eventually turn into NHL players. So <sighs> it's off season time and we'll see who's expiring, who we have to re-sign and deal with. Uh, looks like Vigier wants a contract extension. So we will sign him up. Um, Blake Wheeler probably doesn't need to be kept to be honest. Um, but you know, Pateni, we bring in, he's coached, like, what, two, three seasons, maybe? Coaches two seasons with the Growlers, leads them to a cup. Like, that's pretty fantastic. And not only that, but his system fits really good with this team, too. And apparently he's won two Stanley Cups, so who else was he? He was with Vegas. So, yeah, Vegas must have won a cup then. Um, at some point, yeah, they did. They won it back in 2023, 24. Obviously, they won 50 wins. I shouldn't have known the 62 win percentage team. That makes sense. So, okay, we get um, Vigier resigned. We're gonna resign Scran Scra Scraston. I guess is how you say that name. Um, Cavano will sign. Same with Platt. Same with most of these scouts. Carcillo, yes. And all right, that's it for staff. Okay, so did I not resign Naslin? How did I miss that? Oh, whoops. My bad. Okay. So we got Carpenter, Vorobyov, and 13 other players becoming RFAs. So that's a little rough, to be honest. We've got a lot of guys that are going to want decent money. Um, we're going to sign Donovan Christie this year too. Just a monster year, 92 points in 68 games. Um, he's NHL ready. There's no doubt in my mind about that. His, yeah, his shooting could be better, but he's essentially gets one X factor to start off. So that's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we're looking at. Apart from that, Kazemnikov will get a contract. Gochi Leduc, I'm going to let ret uh, develop for one more year in the minors, or in the juniors, and then we'll try to sign him. And now it's time to start kind of cleaning, not cleaning house necessarily, like we have to sign Wolski, but like a guy like Lume will be on his way out at 24. Um, Bugstad will get a contract, same with Tengrady and Karanen. Again, those guys were drafted in the same year. And Vrobyov doesn't want an extension, which is frustrating at 8.3 million. So we'll see what kind of contracts and deals we can get. Carpenter's a really good deal. I'm actually quite surprised with that. I didn't think he was going to be that good. But, you know, 6.3 million only pays out a $5.33 million contract for the next four years. Or 5.355, so it goes up a little bit. Um, Dominic Cahoon is 87 rated. See, he's he's pricey. 8.275 million is going to be a seven, just over seven million dollar contract um, for the next. He wants three years. He's going to be rough to move at that point. So if we go. We go 7.25 for the next year. He is 33, remember. So, um, not the most ideal situation, but we'll deal with it. 
3.3 million for Edwards for the next two years is probably worth it. Um, Delmore is a little pricey, uh, 4.65 million. It's five years though, it's a five year contract. So a 3.957 or 975 million. Yeah, so pretty much 4 million is a really good price for a guy like Delmore because he's gonna continue to develop. Um, Donovan Christie, we'll get him signed up, add him to our forward core that's already looking pretty decent. Grand Pierre wants 2.25 which gives us a $1.92 million contract, roughly. So that's not bad either. Drew O'Connor, we should re-sign. He was really decent, and he's cheap for that price. We will sign him. Uh, Bush isn't too bad. Felipe Myers, not for three years you don't, buddy. We'll offer you for one, just to keep the defensive depth. Um, looks like Pionk and Coughlin don't... Well. Pionk does want to re-sign, but at 33 and at only 79 rated, he's not worth $4 million. Coughlin will probably let both those guys walk, so I'm just going to release them now. We have a lot of defensemen, to be completely honest. Uh, Trevor Moore is nice and cheap. We'll offer him like $1.5 million for the next one year. Um, Eugene Edwards is ridiculously cheap on a two-way contract. Matt Luff... Same kind of deal, 1.25 should get him re-signed. Uh, Dean Kukan, I think, is on his way out at 35 as well. We'll release him. We will sign Sergei Kuzevnikov. He's developed so well. Like, look at him. He's like three stars across the board at 19 years old and a playmaker. So keep an eye on him. He kind of reminds me of uh, Kucherov, kind of, to be honest. Like, he takes a little while to develop, but is looking like he's going to develop into something real nice. So we'll re-sign Thomas Rodin. He was just fine this previous year. We'll re-sign Hudson Jeffrey. Same with Byron Borowski. As, as much as these guys have kind of been disappointments, at the same time, it is still worth it to go out and offer them money and contracts and roster spots because, again, we you know have some roster spots to offer. It's not like we're completely jam-packed in the roster yet. Um, Ole Lume never really developed. He's yes, he's big, but not for 70 rated at 24 years old, right? If he was 20, sure, maybe then he'd have some kind of shot of making the league, but I just don't see it happening. Um, Kuranen and Tengrati, we definitely need to offer contracts to because they are ready to play and they will be getting play time. And then apart from that, I'm going to sign Timofey Morozov. Eight points in 50 games is not the same as like 44 points in 50 games. So he needs some new development, a new kind of set of scenery here. And apart from that, I think we're going to run Fleischman and Chris, Stankov or Chris Stanovich um, in the league this year. Um, in the AHL this year, sorry has no interest in a two-way contract so we'll offer Fleischman a deal we will qualify Vorobyov for now just until I figure out how much money we have left and how many players we can kind of move around and work with here so let's advance a day see how this turns out and okay we're gonna have to figure out Vizier um we'll probably end up firing Blake Wheeler because he's also a forward coach so Apart from that, Carcillo resigns. We get Carpenter for a real cheap contract. Same with Edwards, same with Moore. Felipe Meyer doesn't want to play for us anymore, which, fair enough. He played bottom pairing minutes all year. Uh, O'Connor signs, Grand Pierre, Luff, Tangrati, Cahoon. Oh, sorry. Cahoon and Delmore don't sign. Borowski does. Same with Kernan, same with Morozov, Bugstad, Christie. Kazevnikov, Rodin, Hudson Jeffrey, Yaskin, Edwards, Fleischman, Shattenkirk, Wolski. All right, we get just about everybody apart from Cahoon and Delmore, and we still have $19 million. So I think there is a good chance that we could see or could seek to bring back um, Vorobyov still and just keep the goaltending stacked. But the problem with that is that I don't know how exactly we're going to play it. As far as um, as far as goalie development goes, so Cahoon wants one year. I'm gonna offer him eight point 
Yeah, we'll offer him eight and a half for one year. That should be fine. Um, Delmore wants... I'm going to try four and a half for the next five years. That should be enough to bring him back. I don't see why he wouldn't sign that. And then how much does Vorobiov want? He's looking at... He's going to be expensive. Eight years would cost us $17 million. Yeah, no thank you. I'm sure somebody will qualify him. And to be honest, I kind of have faith in Tiro Pispinen now because he hasn't ridiculously screwed us over on contracts or anything. Sure, Vorobyov's played fantastic. He's won 98 games out of 181. He's been 50%, which is really good, considering that it took him three years to develop. But at this point, is is $8 million for one season with this goalie really worth it? Probably not. I think we can build a decent defensive group in front of these in front of our other goalies like Peaceman and we get Cahoon, we get Delmore. Again, those guys should be signing those contracts, but at eight million dollars left, I would rather spend it on a defensive free agent or somebody that we can bring in to help out these other goalies instead. Let them develop. You know, they're younger, right? So that's a good start. Kelly Mahler, I have very high hopes for. I'm not saying I'm going to get my hopes up as far as he's like, I, like I'm going to expect him to do anything because he's a rookie in the NHL. Who knows how it's going to go, but his size, his abilities, everything like that just screams number one NHL goalie eventually. So I think that's where we're going to leave free agency. I don't think we have any other expirees, if I'm not mistaken. We do not, just the one goalie, and, you know, he's right in the prime of his career, so somebody's probably going to look to qualify him, and then we'll get picks for it. So, um, we're going to try to rehire Vigier. Um, that was the thing I missed, because I would very much like to um, bring him back to the team. We'll offer that. We'll go fire Wheeler for now, I think. Um, and yeah, I don't see us trading Peaceman in. I do see us potentially getting qualifying offers or picks for Vorobyov, but let's just stop here for a second, um, figure out the staff a little bit more here, because we're not really spending, I guess, yeah, we are, never mind. <laughs> Alright, so Fire Wheeler, just for now. Um, progress reports are looking good, everything's set up here. For this team to succeed and get even better so i like where we're at i really do like where we're, this team is at where we're sitting the chance we have here did dolman really just go down to a low four as a second rounder bruh what the heck billy dolman literally never developed and i was so excited for him like he looked so good seriously i haven't seen a medium four develop into a low four before like that's what the heck seriously he's low four now oh man you gotta be kidding me what a joke okay well that kind of sucks but um let's see what's available in free agency as well so Braden point yeah that's a pretty good player but obviously we can't really go for most of these guys um I don't even know if there's anybody we can go for in here. I think most of these guys are drafted, so. Victor Hedman's still kicking it. <laughs> Ooh, Artemi Panarin could be an interesting one-year sign-in. See, that's, that's why we save money, is because we could go out and add a guy like Panarin, put him on the third or fourth line, and he will very likely produce. So, I think that is going to be the play. Um... Apart from that, you know, I would kind of like to bring back, um, what's his name? I would kind of like to bring back Felipe Meyer, but how much is he actually asking? Oh, he only wants two million. Okay, we could make that work. How are we looking on other defensemen around here? Nishushkin didn't really turn out. Lume, Brylin, yeah, okay, all those guys are signed pretty much, so... Let's just go by overall rating here because we got an 85 rated 37 year old Artemi Panarin that I would like to sign. We'll offer him one year at five and a half million. 
And then apart from Panarin, he's still got all of his X factors, which is huge. Apart from Panarin, though, we're going to try to re-add um, Felipe Meyer because he just didn't want to sign with us for some reason, one reason or another. I think I must have gone by him. But he fits our system well, which is kind of the big thing. So where did he go? He's like two million bucks, is he? Oh, it's because of the... That's why. I'm like, why isn't Felipe Meyer in the same spot I just saw him in? It's because I switched that up on myself there. So, Felipe Meyer, I just want him for one year. We'll offer him like 2.75 million. I'm trying to make this team as winnable as possible, or like as winning as possible. So, we get Bernard Vigier back, which is good. And we should be getting Panarin and Meyer here too. Uh, Panarin got another offer? No, perfect. Okay, so we get Artemi Panarin. We get Felipe Meyer back, or Myers back, and I think this team's ready to go for the next season. So guys, looking at the team this year, and we have some big name players that have developed, that are in need of X-Factors, and that are making this team look unstoppable now. So, first things first. Carpenter's got five X factors, so he's good. Pitkinen's fine. Most of these guys are fine. Dominic Cahoon is up to an 88, so he gets one more X factor, even though he is uh, looking like he's starting to decline a little bit. So you got Ankle Breaker, Elite Edges. Um, let's see. His best stat on here at this point is probably 93 speed, apart from obviously his deking. So I think we change bounce back. Um, out for something else at this point because his durability has gone down a bit and it's probably going to continue to go down so we'll take out bounce back we will put in puck on a string and we will put on wheels because that looks a little bit more like Dominic Cahoon to me so after him um give uh sorry Edwards gets another x factor he's 83 rated now or sorry 85 rated and I think one of his best, I didn't actually look at his stats. We, we're basing these solely off of stats. So his stats show he's a very, very well-rounded player, to be honest. He's got puck on a string. He's got elite edges. Um, so his next highest statistical category would probably be, he's still deking. Like deking and skating are kind of his best categories. But he's got, like, he's got four stars across the board pretty much. So, um... 91 stick checking is up there so i think we're gonna give him stick him up i think that's a an effective ability for him and just the way he plays so let's do that all right um so that should help stick lifts will definitely be a good one for him apart from him uh gibbons is good he's got an x factor or his own ability already so we can't really change anything there um Donovan Christie, though, is a new player to this team. He's got an insane shot, really good senses, and uh, is on on the incline for development. So he gets two. Two? Oh, he's 80. Yeah, he's 84. So he gets two X factors. So his shooting is probably the category to go with. I think accuracy is kind of the main thing there. Um. So I think we give him one T and Schnipe because I think that is kind of the player he is. Just looking at him. He wears number 48, so we'll probably adjust that a little bit. Um, but yeah, one T and Schnipe would probably be the two most likely kind of abilities he will use. We'll change his number to 48. I got to remember that. But he's a great addition for a sixth round sniper. So after that... Um, I don't think we have too many others. Felipe Steves should probably get one. Same with Drew O'Connor. Drew O'Connor's best category is four-star physicality. Okay, so we'll add that. Um, Felipe Steves' best category is four-star defense. No, no sorry, five-and-a-half-star. They're four-and-a-half-star puck skills. So I guess we'll give Felipe Steves puck on a string, even though he's huge, but that's okay. Um, he deserves it and really had a good year 29 goals is pretty insane so i'm sure having an x factor uh will help with that but he was he was really good on our playoff run um last episode 
then apart from that, uh, we'll do Drew O'Connor to give him just like um, probably Truculence. That seems like the most kind of physical. Uh, actually, yeah, let's give him Shrug it off. That's probably a little bit better because he's going to be a bit of a grinder. So that is the team. That's what we're looking at. Our goalies. Sorry, I forgot about our goalies. Um, so Peacemanin's good. Mahler gets two, and his best stats are definitely his reflexes. So high stick, low stick. So stick and glove, probably no. Stick and breakaways, like five hole and breakaways is good. So we will add that to him. His stick side's better than his glove side. You don't usually see that too often in a goalie. And I'm going to obviously do all the equipment and stuff here too, but I am excited for Calais Mahler. He looks good. So we're going to give him a last stand, and we're going to give him poke checking I think all or nothing I think those are accurate for him and let me just go edit his equipment nice and quick all right so this is how Callie Mahler's looking um I I hope you guys like his equipment took me a little bit of time because I kept messing up on it but uh, he's got a partial beard and hopefully is going to be one of our best goalies coming up here So that's it for X Factors. You guys can kind of get a sense of how the team's looking, but we'll still go over, show you the lines. We're obviously a buyer at this point. We are looking so strong as a team, and we've got some very good new additions as far as Donovan Christie looks fantastic. Um, Bo Gibbons is going to make a big impact too, as a fantastic looking player. Panarin is going to help out. Felipe Steves is running the fourth line by himself now, pretty much. Um, and the top six looks dirty. So. And that's the defense. Uh, Nicholson's easily our best defenseman, but Grand Pierre and Delmore are, you know, starting to get up there. Hopefully, we will see some more improvement here as the season goes on. But at the moment, Vorobyov's out. Um, Peacemanin and Mahler are in, and we will see if those guys can get it done. They are massive goalies. As far as the AHL goes, obviously, we are trying to um, spark the growth of Kazevnikov as well as. Um, what's his name? As well as Morozov. So, two OVs from the other uh, draft class there in 2028, considering we're going into 2029 now. Obviously, those two guys are looking really good. So, our goalies look good too. Marco Fleischman and Moises Kristanovich looking like they could be very good. So, I'm going to call up Trevor Moore. Um, for the team and then that's pretty much it and we will be good to go once I show you guys the team ratings All right, so this year our team Has got a hundred offense 90 defense and 87 goaltending There is a good chance that we are going to be contenders yet again this season All right guys, so this year we barely squeak into the playoffs with Buffalo hot on our tail They still might make the playoffs too as the Flyers look like they're just out of it but unfortunately we don't get a lot of scoring this year, to be completely honest. We do get Donovan Christie back from injury, which is good, um, because he did suffer an injury throughout the season. But the team did okay. Um, Production-wise, was down, but it's okay. We're not going to complain about that. So looking at the entirety of the league here, I mean, you can see we're going to be playing Pittsburgh in the playoffs. But we end up finishing fourth. In the Atlantic, which isn't too bad, 97 points is pretty decent. We're playing the second-seeded Pittsburgh Penguins, which that's not going to be fun at all. But we did finish 11th, which is really good. Philly, Columbus, Ottawa all missed the playoffs. Same with Carolina, but, like, look at this. The Western Conference is so weak. My goodness, like, Winnipeg is the 16th seed. Arizona is the 18th. Vegas 19, Vancouver 20, like come on, Tampa finishes dead last, so that's an L for them, but didn't they just win the lottery? They did indeed, they got Ed Carvalho, who's a very good player, but um, no, not a terrible record, we go 46, 31, and 5, um, and only 69 points this year for Catan was our best scorer. Uh, Fantilli scores just 67 points. Not very good again. And the, yeah, the whole top line just didn't produce at the level we've been seeing, which is too bad. 
Panarin put up 51 points as a 38-year-old, so that's pretty impressive. Donovan Christie got 43 points, uh, and 42 for Gibbons is really good. Same with Edwards. That whole whole line put up 40 points this year, which is really solid. Um, apart from that, Delmore, Grand Pierre, the defense didn't produce very well, unfortunately, apart from, of course, uh, Nicholson, who puts up 61 points. Not quite 68, but again, really, really good season from him. He's been... Um, he's been rock solid for this team and kind of leading this team to the playoffs. So I guess, yeah, Fantilli still did score the most goals, but barely. Um, as far as the league goes, we're very likely going to see Matthews win the Art Ross and the Hart. Um, your best goal scorer this year was Donald Bolesky in Montreal. Interesting for a fourth round or fourth round, fourth overall pick. Connor Bedard scored 90. Oh, man, the Rangers got a steal in him, hey? Second overall. He should not have gone second overall. He should have been first, but what do you do, right? Um, apart from that, you know, lots of big-name goal scorers in here, but the best defenseman in the league, for the most part, was Aaron Kiviaru. Go figure. Nicholson finishes top 10, but there were quite a few better defensemen, so... Apart from that, Goldies are going to see Sebastian Kosa win 47. How about Raphael Dadeno? He turns into a, a pretty good goalie. And of course, Tiro Pispinen wins 40 games for this team. He was fantastic as well. So lots of good goalies in here. Lots of goalies with 30 plus wins. I mean, Timofey Malikov was one of the goalies we were going to try and draft and it just never happened. Um, but yeah, like look at all these 30 game winners. That's a lot. As far as rookies go... Dawson Hirma is probably going to win Rookie of the Year. I mean, I don't know. Ed, Car Ed Cavallo looked really good. Scored 50 points. 49 from Demers as a 20-year-old. I mean, I, I don't think he wins it, to be honest, but not terrible. Donovan Christie and Gibbons are right behind him, though. Um, 25 goals, yeah. So it's unlikely that we see uh, a winner there. And I think I totally forgot to show you guys, but Felipe Steves ended up winning the Calder last year, so that's good to see. But we will be taking on this Pittsburgh team coming up. It's going to be a rough one, rough go, because they've got Dreisaitl, Jacko, McGrory, Shafley. My goodness, like, talk about a stacked group of players here. So, yeah, this is probably going to be a little rough. I can't believe Rutger McGrory turned into an elite player. Seriously? What, did he score like 100 and something points? Not really. He was just 50 points consistently and developed from Vancouver, I guess, too. So defensively, Simon Nemec is a very nice player there as well. Um, that's going to be tough to deal with. He's a high elite defenseman, too. Um, and they've got solid defense. Kameso's good. So is Shirakov. They've got very good goaltending here. So yeah, not really surprising that they've made it this far. Pittsburgh picked up Miles Peckham too somehow. So they're legit. They've got a team and it's going to be a struggle in the playoffs here this upcoming year. So we'll save that for next episode. As far as the AHL goes, our team did quite well. 50 wins um, is, I think, their best season yet. I might be incorrect on that. We might have had one bigger year. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, actually, no, no, we had a 56 win year, that one year with, um, with what's his name, um, Evan Rodriguez scoring 83 points, but, no, Huskies finished top 10, so that's really good, um, Growlers finished 11th, so, it's overall, it's a really good season, and, the uh, Huskies will be taking on Laval in the next, or in the first round of the playoffs, because Evnikov was sweet, he's gonna be good to see. In the NHL in a year or two, Petrov also developed pretty decently. Dolman has just been consistent. Same with Borowski, same with Wolski. Francisco Wolski had a good year. He is 22, but probably won't develop like our other players. So that's where we're going to wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, and hit notifications to never miss these uploads. And of course, make sure to leave comments and I will try to get back to you. And that is it for me. This is Daniel signing out and until next time.